In a past conversation on an important moral issue, someone objected to what I was saying, objected rather vigorously to the conclusion I presented. I paused for a moment thinking of the response I wanted to give, that my statement was more than conjecture, rather based upon 40 years of theological training, certified and approved by the church, etc. But rather than blow him out of the water, which seems to be the tenor of modern times, rather than judging that person to be dumber than a stump, I decided to give a pastoral model to meet his accusation, a mild response and acknowledgement that the individual was welcome to his view, but that Catholic scholars and I would disagree with him. In that instance, I chose, I decided to, if you would, rise above the confrontation and model a Christian response. In these modern times, in academic and other settings, business, social, certainly political, and yes, even our church, there are those who seek to confront and challenge us. Sometimes it's necessary to respond in a forceful manner. But oft times it is not worth the resulting divide, the polarization that arises, perpetuating further hard feelings and frustrations, yes, ensuring that no dialogue, no development, no agreement occurs. Note the vitriol currently sweeping back and forth in our country a model of relationships that we unfortunately pass on to our children. Today we celebrate the Feast of Ascension. And with that celebration, I would say to you, comes an invitation for all of us to say, who say we believe, and also to all of us who say we believe, a challenge. Not just for those ancient disciples, no, 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 but for the modern world to hear. Jesus has finished his teachings, he's finished his proclamation, Jesus died, Jesus is risen, now Jesus rises above this weakened human sphere, ascends back to the Father. So today the invitation for all of us to rise above our weaknesses and sins, our desires, our wants, especially in those moments of challenge from others, to guard our words, our actions, our beliefs, our positions, huh? Today, Jesus returns to the Father, not to desert us, no, but to allow a new phase of salvation history to begin, to help our ascension, if you would, within the human existence. God the Father accomplished the initial task of what? Creating the world and sending the Son, beginning the covenant of salvation. God the Son, Jesus Christ, has accomplished that task, fulfilling the divine side of the covenant. And now Jesus ascends so as to allow us, allow for the gift of the Holy Spirit to help us on our side of that covenant, to assist us to do what? To rise above the distractions, the conflicts of this weakened world, to prepare the world and our part of the world to ascend to a peace in the kingdom of God promised, huh? Through the gifts of the Spirit given, our God continues to journey with us, guiding us in all our struggles of life, huh? protecting us in the midst of daily frustrations. Look at God's word. The Acts of the Apostles. Jesus, confronted by the Apostles' weak faith, uh, weak faith rather, could justifiably have exploded in frustration and anger with all that he had endured. But what's he do? Instead, he rises above their fears and their shock prepares them for the truth of the gospel. He sets the stage for the coming spirit, that final step in God's salvation. Certainly the angels, the two men in white, could have delivered a rebuke. Instead, a higher calling is issued to believe in the promise of Jesus, to prepare for the mission of living the gospel, prepare for that gift of the inspiration of the promised spirit that would enable them to profess fearlessly in the face of any adversity that sure to come their way, the gospel of salvation, to proclaim the good news of that salvation. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, Paul now, 
person certainly known to lower the boom on others. Now, as a Christian who encountered many such accusations, Paul had to rise above the recriminations, had to deal with his own personal faults, had to rise above his own limitations, and then to proclaim by living the gospel of the risen Lord. Strengthened by the Lord himself and the Spirit promise, Paul preaches the gospel with wisdom and with insight, with fortitude. He confronted when necessary, of course, but was pastoral when needed, always inspiring others to do what? To ascend to the heights of their own faith, to live in the joy of the resurrection, to advance in the love and the care of a loving God. In the words that Paul himself tried to live, we are to act with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of that spirit through the bond of peace. Paul says it is the spirit promised from Jesus that helps us to achieve that peace, huh? to experience our own ascension in this life and into the next. And in our quest for salvation, to know the right way, to do the right thing, what a Christian should do. Paul tells us that the Father who raised Jesus will not forsake us. We are his children. The Spirit of Jesus Christ descended that we might ascend with him, inspired with the ministries needed for life and for salvation. In the gospel, the authority of Jesus is given to the apostles and to us, all our mission to evangelize the world by whatever vocation we have by preaching the good news of salvation, by pastoral exhortation when needed, by confronting ignorance wherever it is found, but above all, by assisting all the children of God in moments of doubt and fear. In the gospel, Jesus gives his assurance of being with us whenever the challenges and concerns arrive. With the signs and wonders, it says, with a Christian resolution to all concerns, overcoming the demons and the sicknesses, etc., that afflict the human nature. Jesus, ready to confront, if needed, always with a gentle challenge, is here to help us to do likewise, to do what? To be another Christ, to be strong, to overcome adversity, to seek unity, to be about the work of the kingdom of God we experience with the Easter resurrection. But first, Jesus is always challenges us to rise above our own failures, our own faults, to help complete the work of salvation by taking up the challenge to live our faith. Jesus assures the disciples of old and his modern day followers, he will be with us always. Today on this great feast of the ascension of the Lord, then a twist, there's a turn from the focus on Jesus to the focus on each of us. He who first descended into our midst with all the foibles and weaknesses now ascends, rises to the glory that is rightfully his in order that the spirit of God, the spirit of love, love itself might be given to us. Today in celebrating the ascension of the Lord comes the challenge to discard the examples of all the professionals and others who spend so much energy and time, especially in current political year, bad-mouthing each other, creating havoc and division on many levels, illustrated by the daily media, polarization, even in our church, even in our own parish. Today comes the challenge to follow the Lord Jesus, to rise above our weakened human existence, to model the gospel we profess with our tongue in order that the spirit of God, the spirit of the gospel, might be passed on to the coming generations rather than the prevailing vitriol. Like myself, you probably remember the adage, if you can't say anything good about someone, what? Don't say anything. Today comes the challenge to follow the ascended Lord that we might, what? Grow in our faith. That we might enable the kingdom of God to come about. And today an invitation, not to obsess about all that causes us distress, about those who challenge us challenge us with differing ideas about those who might even cause a bit of fear in our lives. In such cases, remember the words of Jesus, the Spirit of God will give you what to say. Remember that in the Spirit of the Eucharist, we are all children of the one Father. 
We are all called to be Christ to all we meet. So on this Ascension weekend, if you experience moments of doubt during these modern times, if you feel set upon because of your beliefs, if you feel the need to be reassured of our faith, know that Jesus remains our anchor and our strength, that Jesus is the power of our own ascension peace. And in those moments when we feel like barking back, verbally assaulting those who disagree with us, those we disagree with, know that Jesus and the Spirit promise is with us to help us through all of our dis-ease, all of our fears, giving us the wisdom necessary to respond in a Christian manner. Like the disciples of ancient times, we are not to stand by idly, but keeping our eye on the ascending Lord, we are to remain busy in this life, in this world, living the faith again professed, keeping the gospel again we profess. Today, follow the example of Jesus, our Savior. Be true to his teachings. Live a life of faith, love, a service. Rise above that which keeps us earthbound, the frustrations of this life, anger towards others, envy, deceit, pride, everything that chains us to this passing world. In the time to come in the near future and beyond, in the midst of our divided country and church, there will be many situations that demand a response, yes. In faith, choose how to respond. Know that in each case, the Spirit of God gives us the correct answer, the required courage to deal with life and other children of God, offers to all of us a new beginning to make a new attempt in living our faith. Today, hear the word of God. Jesus affirms for us that, as he said to his apostles long ago, I will be with you always, even until the end of time. Today, hear that word. Today, believe that word. And live your lives according in the days to come. Seek always to rise above the tenor of this troubled world, especially when confronted personally by the latest words of that least favorite politician, that least favorite clergy, family member, or neighbor. Model the Christian life for all to see till the end of your days, and then see the kingdom of God, not only now, but the kingdom of God forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit.